Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Nicole with Made From Scrap. I'm gonna go over a project I did today and give you a little uh, tips on how to put together the basket. This is um, some artisan cardstock that I've woven together and then I've used some of the new fibers um, that are available at Country Craft Creations. This is to um, highlight the paper collection that has been made by Tamra um, over at Country Craft Creations and it's available on the website. Um, I've used some flowers from my stash, Graphic 45, um, Prima. Um, I've used a die from my stash, which is a little bunny here. Um, cut that out, inked it up with some Tim Holtz Distress ink in order to um, make it look like a little chocolate bunny. And then I've pulled out um, an old uh, book that I that I have um, that I could pull apart from, which shows some little bunnies on it. So uh, you could do with it as you wish, but uh, these are some eggs from Dollar Tree. And I just ink the edges. This is um, a medium weight chipboard that it's on. And the idea is just to use it as either um, a home decor piece or the front of an album, which if you're gonna use it as the front of an album, I would suggest putting a couple magnets on the back of it so that you could take it off of the album when you go to open the album because otherwise it wouldn't lay flat. But you can see that um, all we've really done is done some weaving of some strips of paper. And this was actually just from some leftover um, artisan cardstock that I had from making the actual um, mini album from Ireland Forever, the, the book that I made with the other paper, um, another one of the papers from Country Craft Creations. So it's a beautiful, beautiful line um, that Tamara has made available, both the Country Bunny collection that I'm gonna be working with today and the Ireland Forever. Uh, there's other ones that she has out right now and there's also um, other papers that she's working on getting out. So run to your store, countrycraftcreations.com and uh, pick up some there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with, and this is to match the, the mini album that I've made. So I'm starting with the medium weight chipboard, which is eight and a half inches wide and 10 inches tall. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut down uh, a sheet of 12 by 12 paper to 10 and a half inches on one side and 12 on the other so that we can use the scoreboard here. And I'm going to lay down the paper here. I'm going to use the spacers that are also available at Country Craft Creations. And then I'm going to get out some of my handy dandy score tape on a roll if you have the sheets. Um, I've mentioned this before. This makes it so much more enjoyable to make mini albums because it is so much faster. So literally stick it down, cut it off, down the other side. Use the mess on my desk, but you know, we're crafters, it's not always neat. Okay, cut off this last piece. So, literally, you can make this with one sheet of medium weight chipboard and one sheet of 12 by 12 uh, cardstock. And then, what you can do is you want to burnish this down. If you use glue, by all means, use your glue. Um, I use the art glitter glue. It dries really fast and um, dries clear. It folds really well. So let me just take this off. And that's why you use that because it's so much faster. Now make sure that your sheet of cardstock is all the way up in your scoreboard in the corner. Make sure that your um, spacers are in there and then you're just going to place your chipboard right up against there. So this is going to give you a nice even um, limit on either side, top to bottom, back. And now what you're going to do is you're going to take your board, your chipboard, and you're going to burnish the sides like this so that you are bending over. Okay. And then what I like to do is I like to rub the bone folder against the edge so that it starts to wrap around the chipboard. And you're going to do that to all four sides. Okay. Next 
thing we're going to do is we've created some right, some squares here on each of the corners. Now I'm using some leftover chipboard, so mine is not exactly eight and a half inches wide. That's why it's a rectangle over here, but yours will be square. And then we're going to cut out each of these squares on the corners so that we can have a nice even wrap around the corner of the chipboard, the edges of the chipboard, and make it really nice and straight. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to place some glue down right next to the edge of that chipboard and on that piece. And I'm going to put my bone folder right behind the paper and I'm going to push against that chipboard so that that glue starts to soak in and then I'm going to continue wrapping the paper around the edge. And then I use a lint-free um, paper towel to wipe away any excess, excess, excess glue. I can't speak today. I can do the same thing on all four sides. So that is wrapped, and this is going to be the base for our uh, cover or home decor item. I'm using some Tim Holtz vintage photo here, and I'm just distressing the edges real quick because I like the look of it. So just take a minute to do that. Now we're going to select a piece of paper that we want for the cover, and I'll be right back. So when I did the first, this one, I used this paper, and what I did is I literally just stuck it up here against the corner, and I watched to see whether or not I have some space, because I wanted a little bit of edge, so you can see that. I stuck it up there, and... This is the way I measure, and then I'll use my pencil and I'll just mark it, and then I'll cut paper like that. And if you're a person who really likes to have the measurements, the paper measures eight and three eighths in width, and then the decorative paper that is, and then the length is nine and three quarters. It's long. And then I use uh, Tim Holtz, like I said, around the edges. So with this one, I am going to use a different paper, I think. I just want to. So I want mine to be a little bit different this time. So anyway, I lay it down, like I said. I use my pencil and I mark the paper. And I mark both corners. And I got my cutter. And I'm going to place it in the cutter so that my mark is right on that cut line. I'm going to go ahead and turn it around and place my mark right in the cut line. And that's that. It's my vintage photo distressed ink. It is the one that I use most often. Uh, second most would be the soot. It's the black coloring. But this is the brown that I like very much. So now I'm going to take my glue and I'm just going to place the glue around the edge.
Isn't this paper beautiful? It's country bunny paper. I'm telling you what. All right, let me play with that glue. Okay, so for the basket. The basket is made from the strips of paper that I had left over after putting together my Ireland Forever album, like I mentioned. So what I did is I just cut down some strips into three quarter inch wide strips. You can see I have some here. And then what I did is I just laid out some of these strips like this, horizontally. And then I took a vertical one that's going running vertical and I went over the first one. I'm sorry, under th the first one. It really doesn't matter either way, but you're just going to go back and forth, weaving back and forth on top and below the strip of paper. Okay? And then you're gonna do the next one and you're gonna do it opposite. So if your paper went underneath this top one, you're going to go on top of that one and under the next one. So we'll lift this up, the second one, and then we'll go on top of the third one, and then we'll go under the next one and on top of the last one. And then you just push them together, and that's how you get your basket weave. Okay? So you just have to make sure to work these straight. Once we get the third one, it'll be a little easier to keep straight. Let's go with the third one. We're going to go under that first one, over the second one, under the third one, over the fourth one, and under that last one. Push it over. There you go. I'm going to do it again. So I'm going to do it this way. See how I just take some time? one. This is good to do with the kids too. You can make your own little baskets. And I think after you do this a couple of times, you're going to want to straighten out the edges, but let's see what we've got. Okay, see how it's staying together a little bit more now? Push it down, push that down. See how it's a basket weave? Okay. I'm going to pull this one down just to kind of square up the ends. A little bit, I'm pulling these up and down. Okay. Now once you think you have a long enough basket, which mine, I will show you. It's about seven and a half inches in length this way. Okay. I'm gonna do a smaller one, but uh, this time. So, if you want one like the one that I made that takes up um, a good part of the the cover, then this is seven and a half inches, okay, in length. And you're gonna cut off these pieces here, the ends. 
And we're going to cut off these pieces here on this end. Okay. And then what we're going to do is each of these flaps that are sticking up, we're going to glue them down. So we're just going to stick a little glue under there. Hold it for a second. Let it start to do its magic. Each one of these flaps all the way around. Okay, we're gonna flip it over, we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Lifting up each of those flaps, putting some glue underneath it, holding it down. Okay. And we're gonna trim to make sure that it's straight in the end. did, which you can do it now or you can do it later, but I took my sponge with my distress ink and I just went around the, the edges, distressing the edges. And then rubbing my sponge kind of flat on top so that it picks up on the ridges since it's not flat and that helps give it some dimension. in all different directions. Okay. That is your basket. See how it's still pliable? So this is how I curved it. Okay. And then I took another piece of paper. And what I did is I curved the paper. How much did I want it to stick up from, from the actual album? And when I had that curve, I placed my paper against it. Okay, so I'm going to place it on the table. I'm going to pull it up away from the table so that it has a curve. And I'm going to place my paper here. Now you may want something to prop your paper up against, okay, so that you can hold it. But what you want to make sure to do is have both sides touching flat on your surface. That way you know it's flat. And what you're going to do is you're pushing this against this paper to hold it up. And the pencil go. I used my pencil and I created this arc on here. I just made a mark, okay, on here, and I'm going to darken it. It's basically like a little hill. So you can see that, okay? Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Cutting this out. Okay, this little hill. That's going to be the bottom. Then I'm going to cut this piece into a section that I'm going to use. I'm back in my scoreboard and I'm going to score it. It should have a one inch strip. I'm going to score it at half an inch. I just trimmed it up so it's it's straight. But I put, I scored it right down the middle at half an inch, and I'm gonna fold that. Okay, you want to make sure that your piece of paper is long enough that it's as at least as long as your your basket weave. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is this is gonna be placed on your basket weave. You're gonna glue one side of that flap onto your basket weave like that. Okay, let's do that. Let's ink the bottom so that that half inch strip can be placed right on the bottom. You're going to place the fold up against the bottom, okay? So press it there until it dries. Let it take hold. Okay, and then I'm going to cut it to length. Okay. Then you're going to have this flap, and it's going to be very hard to bend it now with this flap. So what we have to do is we have to take our scissors and we have to snip. And then we're going to snip again, we're going to snip again, we're going to snip again. And we're going to make a couple of snips on that middle section of the basket. 
because that's where the curve is going to be. Now, if you want yours rounded, you're going to keep snipping. Okay? And I snip these about three-eighths of an inch in width. Okay? And so that's going to allow us to overlap those portions of the snip paper in order to make this rounded. Okay? And what we want to do is we want to place glue here and then we wanna get our rounded piece and we're gonna glue this now to it, okay? Now, if you want the look of a basket weave on the bottom, then you're gonna do another basket weave. Okay. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna make sure large enough, right? I'd be taking my basket weave and I would place it here. This on top, so I can pretend that this is long enough. What I would do is I would trace it and then cut it out. So I'm going to trace it and then I would cut it out. Okay. My top, cut my bottom. So if I traced it, then remember, I want to ink it. And you don't have to do this if it's not going to show for you, but if you really want it to, you're going to glue this onto this paper that you've used as your, um, your pattern. Okay, glue all the edges down. Create a weave real quick. Vintage photo, creating my my um, distressed look. Definitely distressed since I ripped it apart and glued it all up. But you get the point. It's a basket weave, okay, and it has that arc. So, like I said, what you're going to do is you're going to glue this all along, and you want to start in the middle. So we're going to put some glue on that middle section. Okay, and those flaps are going to get glued against the back of this arc. Okay, so we're going to start in the middle. And if you want to line up your basket weave, by all means do so, but it doesn't really matter to me. So, just going to press down, make sure it glues. And we want to make sure that it's following the arc as much as possible. So I need a couple more snips. You can do this as you go. A little bit more glue. Pull that paper around. Let the glue take hold. Keep bending it with those snips and let the glue take hold. If you want to use your, your uh, clothes pins, this would be good for it. Our folks have these little clothes pins from the Dollar Tree. They're really helpful, but see, they're kind of short. Go. 
also get these ones from the Dollar Tree. They reach a little bit further. Big pack for a dollar. I'm going to make a couple more snips on this side since I needed it on the other. Put some more glue. Bend those around. And hold the glue. Uh, so hold it until the glue takes hold. Keep following it around. It's an extra pair of fingers there. Okay, and that's how you do that. Now on the end here, you're just going to cut off that end. And there's one on this side too. Just going to cut that off. Because this is going to lay flat on your, on your page. You may need to do some trimming. Okay, it's just to get a straight line because that's how it's going to lay down on your book. So we're going to get another scrap of paper and we need a couple of hinges. So we need hinges for the sides, the two sides, and the bottom so that that way we can attach it to our page. The other thing we need are the basket handles. So I just cut three strips of uh, paper, long paper, and then I used a brad in the, in the side here. So let's do the hinges. And then so yours might be a different height as mine. So let's see. That's the way I do it. Mark it. And see will the other side fit in there? Yep, perfect. So I'm gonna make one inch hinges. So you're gonna cut it at one inch and you're gonna score it at the half inch mark. Okay. Get that one. Then I'm gonna do a second one. Second one's going to be for the bottom. So my bottom piece is not going to be the whole length of your bottom of your basket because you don't have the depth in your basket to be able to do so. So I'm going to make sure to burnish so you have that hinge. Burnish so you have that hinge and I marked it halfway. So that's going to be on my basket. So you're going to do this the same way. You're going to put the fold up against the edge of the basket. We're going to glue that and then that's going to allow us to have an edge to attach to your book or to your cover. Okay, one for that side and one for this side. And the folded edge goes against the outside of your basket. Okay, so that you have the flap able to attach to your medium of chipboard. Okay, so that's now we're going to do one for the bottom, down here. Put the folded edge against the edge of your basket here, right there. Now you have these three areas that you're going to be able to glue against your, your medium weight chipboard. I'm not going to touch it yet. so. See how you can still move this, shape this how you want it. So this one's going to be tall. My other one was, was not as tall here. Okay, but now we need the um, top, the handle part. So let's do that. Okay, so we're going to make some strips. I'm going to pull out some more of our straps. And we're going to make the long strips for our handle. Okay, so I made them. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Three eighths in width. So I'm going to cut a couple of strips that are three eighths inches. Not all the same width because I'm not doing that particular, I guess. Um, but I'm not too that big. All right, so I just did three because I liked the look of three. You don't have to do that, but when you put the brad in it, I was able to space those out, and I just like the look of that again. So 
what I did is I put all three of these together on the ends and then I carefully used my little pokey tool and I placed my pokey tool in a spot where I would want the brad to go and I made sure to poke through the paper pushing straight down and wiggling back and forth the pokey tool until it goes all the way through the paper. Now you don't want to poke yourself, right? So you got to be careful. Okay, and then I made this hole in these ends. And I got out my little jar of brads. these this time. Okay, and the other thing that I did is I used my pokey tool on the corner of my box and I made sure to poke through it. Don't put your finger behind. Okay. I made a hole in that. Okay, so once I got the hole through both of those, both the basket and the handles. You'd be able to put the handles behind and make sure to line up your brad, put your brad through, and then you're gonna put the brad through the handles as well. But before I do that, I want to distress. So I'm going to distress these a little bit. And this, my friends, is how I get my hands all dirty. But it doesn't bother me. What I'm doing is I'm pulling the paper a little taut in between my fingers, I use the edge or put the sponge against the edge of that paper anyhow. Get a little ink on the edge. I just re-inked this ink pad, so it's pretty juicy. I feel good on my hands now. That's okay. No biggie. All right, let me put my holes back together. Brad is gonna go through each of those holes. Okay, and then I'm going to spread that brad apart. Okay, and that's how you attach your handles. Now, I didn't poke through the other end because I don't know how tall I want my basket handle. So I want to basically position this on the, on the page and get an idea of how tall do I want it. Do I want it this tall? Do I want it this tall? You know, everybody's gonna be different. How tall do they want theirs? I like mine to be pretty tall. So I'm gonna place mine right in the end. And these uh, strips of paper, again, like I said, they were just left over. So they're the full 12 inch length. Okay. Um, so again, I'm gonna put those together. I'm gonna place my little pokey tool right through it wiggle it back and forth, pulling up on the paper so that it actually goes through. Wiggle that around a little bit to get a good hole. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I'll find the spot that I want, push down on the paper and go back and forth, wiggle back and forth my hand. Okay, and now I'm going to, till it gets started. And then I'm gonna pull up on the paper with one hand and push down on the pokey tool on the other. 
until it gets through there, wiggling the pokey tool back and forth. Okay. And then I'm gonna take my next brad and I'm gonna stick that through. Okay. And then I'm gonna stick each one of these handles right through the hole that we created. Okay, and then I'm gonna spread these wings out to hold this on. And then I just twisted it a little bit so that these are sideways instead of up and down. Okay, make sure that's flat. And that is my handle. Now, like I said, you can spread these out. Now those flaps that we added to the back side are what we're going to use to attach to the, um, the chipboard. So you're going to decide where you want it, right? Do you want to decorate the front? I decorated with a bunch of flowers and stuff on mine. Um, if you like that look, then you might want to put it off to the side. You might want to center it. Everybody's different, right? So I think what I will do is put mine over here on this side. So that's about how I want mine. So I'm going to glue up these edges and stick her down. Yep, I put glue on all three sides, okay? I'm gonna hold this how I want it. That's what's good about using that glue because it gives us a little bit of working time and it dries clear. So I got a little glue and I just wiped it off with my finger, no big deal. Now what I'm gonna do is I wanna make sure that I have this um, straight like I want it or crooked if you want it, whatever. But I'm gonna use my bone folder and I'm gonna press down inside that basket so that that glue really sticks from all of those three uh, flaps down onto the backing, okay? Just pressing it down. Got a little glue on there, that's okay. All right, and there is my basket onto the booklet, okay? Now, what I would do um, to not use up so much grass is I would put something down in there, kind of fill up the space. But what I used, let me close this up. What I used is the new fibers, art glitter. Fantasy fiber. I got a couple different colors, but for this Easter basket, I was using green. So I pull out the fibers, and you can see how nice and airy it is. Right? Play with them, pull them apart, just like Easter grass, and get it all fluffy. Stick it down in there and say, what did you use for the inside? Well, I went to Dollar Tree and I got these little foam eggs. Okay, a dollar basket of them, or bag of them, came with 12 of them in there. And that's what I used for the inside of mine. And I just hot glued them down in there. You know? Just arranged them how I wanted to, but I might not use that hot pink one. Okay. And then I have a little die I got out of my stash. If you don't have one, just cut something out. You can cut out one of the bunnies from the paper, but I use the die, cut it out. Like I said, I use that Tim Holtz a uh, vintage photo. And I 
inked it. I cut out uh, the little bow out of a pink piece of, out of, actually out of a white piece of paper, and I used some of my ink for uh, making it pink. And then I just stuck that down in the basket. Um, I used, I pulled out a stamp that I have. It says Happy Easter. And let's see, I pulled out some lace and put that on here. Now what I did with the lace is before I put the brad, I put the lace so that the brad went through the lace as well. Okay, you can see that there. And then I put in some of my flowers out of my stash, so you can grab some of your flowers and use them. And now you might wanna grab some different flowers. Prima. You know, do what you do. Make some. You can punch out some flowers. You can cut out some flowers. You can distress the edges of them right from the same paper collection. You might want to do that. But this is my little project, and I hope you enjoyed. I hope you. Um, make one. Oh, I, I'll show you the book. So this is the book that I got from a little boutique um, shop. And yes, I ripped it apart. But um, the story was about Mr. McGregor's garden. So I just ripped it out of here. And then I, I used some, some edging on it. But anyway, hope you enjoyed. And make sure to hit that subscribe button so you get notifications of any future videos, and check out countrycraftcreations.com. Bye!